warm welcome. This is Rupai News. I'm Sharma Sreenivas. And I'm Dushan Falls. Let's take a look at the headlines. The president says that the public service cannot be postponed. Details are providing false information to the Presidential Commission probing disappearances of persons by the TNA have been revealed. The members of the Ma Sangha stress the need of uniting all parties to defeat foreign powers against the country. The alliance kickstarts a series of mass rallies of the provincial polls from Gaul. Train services have been normalized. A co-pilot responsible for hijacking a plane has been taken into custody in Switzerland. Now for those in other stories in detail, starting off with local stories. President Mahind Rajapaksa said that circulars, establishment codes of financial and administrative regulations are not above the people. These regulations should only be for people's service. The President made these observations when he addressed the 50th anniversary ceremony of a Sri Lanka administrative service held at the BMSCH in Colombo today. The Sri Lanka Administrative Service was started way back in 1802. Previously, it was known as the Civil Service. The Golden Jubilee of localization of the present Sri Lanka Administrative Service in 1963 was celebrated today. The President noted that the People's Service cannot be postponed. He added that public sector employees bear the responsibility of working in close collaboration with people's representatives. But President, the SLA's officials, President Mahind Rajapaksa noted that public sector officials have the ability to answer the unnecessary interferences aimed at obstructing the forward march of the country which was gained freedom. We are persons who keep faith on practical measures more than theories. That is why we have made an invitation to go to the village. Mind the Chintana is not a theoretical document. It is a practical document. Circulars, establishment of codes, financial and administration regulations are not above the people. It should be for the people of this country. We have the responsibility to make it a reality. Everything should be aimed at providing a service for the people. There is a way to do that along with regulations. No one can go beyond the people. He noted that he will give answers on behalf of officials till they serve the country honestly. Several former secretaries of the Ministry of Public Administration, including the present secretary P. B. Abe Kohn, received mementos from the president. Minister of Public Administration and Home Affairs W. B. G. Senvaratna also received a memento. <laughs> president Mahindraj <laughs> Paksa has also been honored at the ceremony. Senior Minister Ratna Sirivikramanayaka, Presidential Secretary Lalit Virathunga, Chief of President's Staff Gambini Senrath, and senior officials were also present. The Secretary General of the International Human Rights Organization, Dr. K. R. Krishan, says that the Tamil National Alliance is providing false information even to the Presidential Commission probing disappearances of persons. He pointed out that the TNA has already hatched various conspiracies targeting the upcoming Geneva Human Rights Council sessions. The Presidential Commission probing disappearances of persons is now obtaining information from the people in Jaffna. Disappearances of persons is now obtaining information from the people in Jaffna. The Secretary General of the International Human Rights Organization, Dr. K. R. Krishan, said that certain persons were making false information on the needs of Tamil National Alliance. So, what I say is my, to my people, you know, actually we are after 30 years war, we are living very peaceful and happy life in Sri Lanka now. So, uh, they won't actually, they won't divide this country again and divide this community and uh, making some problems in Sri Lanka. 
Tamils are living in harmony with other communities countrywide without any problems, Dr. Krishan said, adding that they have no human rights issues. He revealed that teams headed by Tamil scholars were ready to create awareness among the international community. This uh, voice cuts, what these people say, is not completely true. Uh, what they say, they were always, some people pressing to say like this. You know, the already the Geneva, they made a statement against Sri Lanka. Uh, they won't prove that. So prove some witness they need. So that's the reason they wanted to uh, take this Tamil our community and create problem and saying unwanted uh, things in, uh, in front of the commission. Sri Lanka's permanent resident ambassador in Geneva, Ravinath Arasinghe, calls upon Sri Lankan expatriates in overseas to join hands to defeat the false propaganda against the country. He was speaking at a ceremony in Geneva organized to celebrate the 66th Independence Day celebrations of Sri Lanka. Many foreign media have published news on Sri Lanka under banner headlines. Such news items were based on the loss of human lives due to terrorist activities on daily basis. But today, there was no such situation. Many Sri Lankan expatriates in overseas are waiting to contribute their share towards the country's development and stability. This was the main reason for the improvement in tourism sector and the increased investment opportunities in the island. The prevention of the disseminating false information aimed at tarnishing the image of the country was possible through the unison of Sri Lankan expatriates in overseas. Sri Lanka's permanent resident ambassador Ravinath R. Singer said that it is important to remind this reason today again which was highlighted by him a year ago. Buddhist, Hindu, Christian and Islam religious observances were also performed at the 66th Independence Day ceremony in the presence of around 250 Sri Lankans living in Switzerland. The members of the Mahasanga reiterate that the interventions of the foreign powers against Sri Lanka should be immediately halted. All parties should deny towards this end. The chief Sangha Naika of the Navakorala and the chief priest of the Hunupitiya Ganga Ramaya temple of the Colombo, the venerable Galabudanyani Saratera, said that everyone should condemn the attempts of certain persons to carry tales to the Western nations against Sri Lanka. The members of the Mahasangha have stepped in to protect the country when it was under threat even in the past. The Venerable Gala Bodhanyani Sarathera said that the members of the Mahasangha and the people staged a Satyagraha near the U.S. Embassy recently with this noble aim. The procession of the Mahasangha was led by some elephants. The prelate noted that the collective responsibility of everyone was to defeat attempts of the Western countries to bring a proposal against Sri Lanka in the upcoming Geneva Human Rights Council sessions. Represent of the Western countries were in the habit of disseminating false information on Sri Lanka in their countries to gain their personal aims, although they were fully aware about the country's situation following their visits to the island. All powers favor the country should be united to highlight this reality before the world. People should be constantly made aware on this aspect. A memorandum containing views of progressives of Sri Lankans were handed over to the U.S. Embassy officials during their Satyagraha campaign. Satyakraha Yatra to the Pregati Shili, Sri Lanka can get the Hasatra Sunday Shap, the American Rutana Patil, the Harinta Bar, the Levia. The chief Sangha Naika of the Navakoralia and the chief priest of the Hunupitiya Ganga Rame Temple, the Venerable Galabodanyani Saratera, said that the Western countries headed by the United States should take measures to stop making statements against Sri Lanka. He added that they have two wishes. One is to extend welfare to the United States to gain the knowledge of the Dhamma and act in an impartial manner. And the other one is to clear the thinking of the people with mental unrest who are supporting terrorism in the country. These people were against the development of the country Country, and they were acting like enemies against the island nation, he added. Opposition politicians have been accused of engaging in opportunistic politics provoking the people. Several people's representatives noted that this was clearly indicated at the recent incident took place at Baseline area in the Maragoda. Progressive politicians vehemently condemned the attempts made by certain sections of the politicians to take people onto roads based on a small incident. Their target was to gain a petty political objective creating an unrest among the people at the risk of anyone. Populist leaders noted that and opposition, opposition activists for taking opportunistic 
actions giving wrong impressions for minor incidents when the government was taking measures to solve sensitive problems of the people in a systematic manner. Such incidents of incited people were evident in all occasions before the human rights sessions in Geneva. The invincible political hand behind organized incidents such as Katunayaka, Shiloh and Ratupaswala. The public unrest has now been activated openly. The incident near the baseline road was one such occasion. Bankrupt political parties were taking action to use sensitive problems of people's human rights for their advantage. People's representatives vehemently condemned the attempt to highlight cracks in democracy in the country by presenting persons who were said to be disappeared suddenly before the media. Media spokesperson of the National Freedom Front, Mohammed Musambil, told a media conference in Colombo today that similar incidents took place in the country even in the past. The government should not keep quiet in the face of this incident. Police should take necessary action, he further said. The series of mass rallies organized by the United People's Freedom Alliance for the upcoming provincial polls have been launched. The first mass rally at the electoral level in the southern province was held in Gaul today. The UPFA election theme is Making Joy and Freedom Victorious. The UPFA has organized propaganda meetings and mass rallies at rural, regional, electoral and district levels for the upcoming Western and Southern Provincial Council elections. 4,614 rural-level meetings will be conducted by the UPFA in six districts where the polls are to be held. 97 meetings will be held at regional level while 93 mass rallies are to be conducted at electoral level. The first of these series was held at Tittagalla in Ahangama, Gaul today under the patronage of the Hamba to the district MP Nama Rajapaksa. It was organized by the former Southern Provincial Council Minister AGC Piasiri. UPFA MP Nama Rajapaksa said that the government has fulfilled a large portion of work in villagers and it has improved education of children. New roads were built for the benefit of the villagers. The needs of us and England, or rather the needs of US and England was to appoint a yes man as the leader of the country. Such persons led the country previously. He noted that he will like to give the message to the people that the government will never allow terrorism to raise its ugly head again. Deputy Speaker Chandi Mavira Kodi pointed out that we have created a great reform in the country. The President has created an era conducive for the people to live in an independent and unitary state since the year 2005. We are now living in this era. He called upon the people in the area to give a deci decisive decision on the 30th of March, teaching a lesson for the persons who are waiting to bring down the country's development. In addition, nine main mass rallies are to be held in two provinces under the patronage of President Mahinda Rajapaksa. The first such mass rally will be held in Kaduvela on the 8th of March. Now let's move on to our special segment on election roundup. A meeting organized to ensure the victory of UPF candidates contesting from the Gampa district at the Western Provincial Council election was held in Begum today. Minister Basit Rajapaksa was the chief guest. Several senior members of the UMP participated at a mass rally in Katana to canvass the support of the electors for the candidates contesting the upcoming Western Provincial Council election. A JVP election propaganda meeting was held in Gaul yesterday. Several party representatives addressed the gathering. Former Western Province Chief Minister Prasanna Ranatunga declared open the UPF election office in Jaila. A UMP meeting organized to canvass the support of electors for their candidates contesting the provincial polls was held in Koskode, Gaul yesterday. Sark countries are to be made aware on the Geneva Human Rights Council proposals against Sri Lanka. A Sri Lanka delegation headed by Foreign Minister Professor G. L. Pierce will attend the Sark Foreign Ministerial Meeting for this purpose. The 35th Sark Foreign Ministerial Meeting began in the Maldives today. Sark foreign ministers and representatives of Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, the Maldives, Nepal, 
Pakistan and Sri Lanka are taking part at the meeting. It will be conducted under the theme of an accelerated progress to the zone. The SAG foreign ministerial meeting will be held in several sessions. Discussions will be centered on regional cooperation, elevation of poverty, agriculture, food security, climatic changes, environment, education, trade, health, and the combating of terrorism. Foreign Minister Professor G. L. Peters hopes to create awareness on human rights proposals to be brought before the uh, UN Human Rights Councils in Geneva against Sri Lanka, among other countries. The SARC Foreign Ministerial Meeting will be continued till the 20th of this month. All SARC countries except India have extended their support during the two previous occasions where human rights proposals were presented against Sri Lanka. The main railway control room says that train services have been normalized. Office and long distance trains were operated according to a normal timetable today. Services at all railway stations in the island were maintained without any disruption. The general manager of the Sri Lanka Railways, BAP Arya Ratna, said that the train services on the main lines are being operated in accordance with the daily timetable. Mr. Arya Ratna said that 90% of office trains were operated this morning. 43 out of 49 office trains have been operated for the benefit of the commuters. We are maintaining the train service uh, successfully. Long distance trains such as Urratu Manike, Podi Manike, Yal Devi, Intercity Express trains and the mail trains were operated. In addition, goods trains transporting fuel to Katanayake Airport was also operated. General Manager of the Railways Department, VAP Arya Ratna, appealed to the engine drivers who on strike to report for duty without falling prey to the trade union action of the minor group of employees. He added that the majority of the workers had joined this trade union action as they cannot go against a minor group of strikers. He called upon these employees to report for duty immediately without pushing commuters into difficulty. If they have any problem, they should bring it to the notice of the railway authorities after reporting for duties, he said. Nokara, Wama, Dumbia, Dawane Sanda, Ekatu and Nikela, Kisiam, Gataluwa, Prasnak, Tirona, E. Savata Varta Kalla, E. Pilibanda, Audani, Umkaranla, Katukaran Nik. Commuters said that their daily transportation was not affected by the railway strike. Trains are operating without any problem, they said.